What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And in this video, we're going to be continuing our series on learning how to make weapon skins for CSGO. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be more concentrated on gradients. Now, gradients can be extremely important, especially if you are used to using a lot of flat base colors in your design. You know, maybe you're just looking for something a little bit different that you can use in your next design. And gradients can really help you to do this. So inside of this video, the first thing we're going to talk about is I'm going to show you guys how you can set these gradients up using nodes inside of Blender alone. Then later on in the video, I also want to talk about connecting nodes to other parts of your principal BSDF as well. Uh, to this point, we've mainly talked about connecting things to your base color and connecting them to your normals. However, you can do some really cool designs by taking these same principles and connecting them to other nodes inside of that principal BSDF. Uh, so we're also going to talk about that as well. So that's what this video is going to be about. So anyways, let's go. So the first thing we're going to talk about in this video today are gradients and gradients can be extremely useful inside of your design. Now I'm going to be working off the assumption that most of you guys already know what a gradient is. So I'm not going to go into great detail on that. Uh, however, I did want to show you guys how you could create gradients inside of Blender using nodes inside of your node tree. Now, this can be extremely important if you're used to using only straight solid base colors in a lot of your designs. Uh, you may be looking for something to add that just differentiates your next design from a lot of the previous ones. And obviously you can use gradients to do this. Now, to give you guys an example of a gradient, uh, this is a new op that I am currently working on, and you'll notice that this is actually version three of this. In versions one and two, I used a solid color for my body, uh, but I decided that in version three, I just wanted to make it a little bit different, and so I decided to use a gradient instead. You'll notice that I have a very light blue in the front, and it sort of fades to a darker blue in the back, and then, of course, I added some extra nodes and mixers to be able to add the graphic on top of the weapon as well. We're going to talk about that too. Uh, but gradients can be extremely important. And so I did kind of want to talk about those a little bit inside of one of my videos and show you guys how you can create those inside of Blender. For this example today, I'm going to be working on the slide part of this Glock right here. Uh, and as always, whenever you first start working on a piece of your weapon, the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is select it and go up here and create yourself a material for this slide. Uh, the second thing you want to do, you know, is select your base color and maybe change the metallic and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to do all of that right now. Uh, once you have a material set up right here, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go right down here and you're going to want to hit shift a, you're going to want to go to texture, and then you're going to want to select gradient texture. Next, we're going to hit shift a again, we're going to go down to converter and we're going to select a color ramp. Now, obviously, if you don't know where these are inside of this list, you can use a search and just search for them. Uh, however, in a lot of my videos, I like to show you guys where they are at inside of these menus. So I'm going to select my color ramp and I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Then we're going to take this color output right here. We're going to connect it to this fact. And then we're going to take this color output and we're going to connect it to our base color. Now, at first, you will not see anything, but if we turn this around, you'll notice that this side of the weapon is black and the other side is white. That is because that is the two colors that we currently have set right now inside of our color ramp. Uh, we can go in here and we can kind of move these around if we want our black to be more prominent or our white. You know, you can kind of play around with these sliders and get them the way you want. Uh, but that's basically the first steps in setting up your gradient. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to decide what colors you want to use inside of this gradient. So for me personally, I'm going to do sort of a Miami fade. Uh, I want it to go from a purple to a pink with maybe a blue in the middle. So I'm going to select this first node right here. I'm going to go down to this color box. We're going to turn this up and then we're just going to go in here and we're going to select a purple for our design. Maybe something like that. 
Uh, next, I'm going to do the same thing to this node. I'm going to select it, uh, and then we're going to select our pink color, maybe something along those lines. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to add an additional node in here. So whenever you're doing a gradient, you can obviously do multiple colors and make them fade together. Uh, so in order to add another node to this, all we have to do is go right here to this plus sign and click on it. And as you can see, it has added another node. Then once we have this in there, we can just select it, go right here, and then select our third color, maybe a light blue like that. So as you guys can see, it's fairly easy to go in and set these nodes up to add a gradient to your weapon. Uh, these would be the first initial steps that you would want to take whenever you are creating a gradient for your design. The next step you're going to want to do in this process is to adjust how these colors sit on top of your object here. Now, if you notice, as they currently stand, we have the purple on the right hand side and the pink on the left hand side. Uh, but I would really like for this to go from front to back. Uh, so in order to be able to control this, we're going to actually have to add a couple of more nodes to our tree down here. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to go to vector and then I'm going to select mapping. And this will give us a mapping node that we can use to control the angles and the direction of this uh, gradient. Uh, next, we want to hit shift A again. We want to go to input and then we just want to select texture coordinates. Then once we have these two nodes in here, we just want to connect our generated here to the vector on our mapping. And then of course, take this vector output here and connect it to our gradient texture. Now that we have these nodes set up, we can go in here and we can use these settings to sort of adjust the way these colors sit on top of our object. So for example, I would like my colors to go from front to back where the pink is in the front and the purple is in the back. So in order to do this, I'm going to go right here to this Y coordinates and I'm just going to set it to 90 degrees. And once I hit enter, you'll notice that now I have a gradient that goes from front to back instead of from side to side. Uh, maybe you don't like this being up and down. Maybe you want to give this a little bit of an angle here. You know, we can go in and play with this X rotation. Uh, we can turn this a little bit. And as you can see, it now has more of an angle to it. Uh, we can obviously scale this down or up, uh, you know, using these different settings here. Maybe if you want some different kinds of effects to this, uh, we can also set the location. So maybe we want to move it where we have a little bit more purple and a little less pink. You know, you really just kind of have to get in here and play around with these settings and get this set up the way that you want. Uh, you can also at this point take your nodes right here and move them around. You know, maybe you want this pink to come in further. Maybe you want your purple to come in further. You know, you can kind of play around with this as well. Uh, but that's really the next step in this process. Once you get your gradient set up, the next thing you're going to want to do is set up this mapping and this texture coordinates so that you can really set this up the way you want inside of your project. So the final point I want to make in this video when it comes to gradients is how to add images and textures to your project and where to add them inside of your tree. Now, let's say, for example, I have created some really cool graphics that I want to go over the top of this, but I do not want them to necessarily mess with the gradient that I have right here. Uh, if this is the case, you are going to want to add them uh, in this side of your color ramp. You do not want to add it behind it because anything you add behind this color ramp is going to affect your gradient. Uh, so just for an example, let's hit shift A and go to texture image texture. Now, this would represent the graphics that we have brought into our project using the quick edit mode. I want to add the graphics without altering anything on this uh, gradient right here. So I'm going to add it right here in front of this color ramp. So in order to do that, I'm going to hit shift A again. I'm going to go to color and I'm going to go to mix color. We are then going to take this color output and go to A on our mixer. We're going to take this color output to B. Then we're finally going to take the result out to the base color. And now, as you can see, I've been able to add an image texture to this tree without doing any altering at all to my gradient. But let's say you wanted to do some editing to this gradient. Maybe you wanted to add a texture to it. 
So again, I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to go down here to texture. I'm going to go to noise texture. Uh, I'm going to hit shift A again. We're going to add another color mixer in here. So let's just go ahead and add that. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to take this color output and go to B. Uh, and now, as you can see, I've got this really cool texture on top of my gradient. Uh, so this is just something I wanted to show you guys. You know, there are going to be times in your design where you want to add images over the top of this, uh, or you may want to add some different types of textures to this gradient. And this is basically how you would set this up inside of your node tree. Now to this point in the video series, we've talked a lot about adding nodes to your base color and your normal on this principle BSDF. Uh, but let's say, for example, that you had this idea where you wanted the roughness of your weapon to actually have a gradient on it. Maybe you wanted the front of your weapon to be sort of, you know, rough, and then you wanted it to fade into a shinier part in the back. Uh, the way you could do this is by setting up your gradient, and instead of connecting it to your base color, we could actually connect it to the roughness right here. So I'm going to do that real quick. So first and foremost, let's hit Shift A. Let's go to Texture and let's go to a Gradient Texture. Hit Shift A again. Let's go to a Vector and go to, I'm sorry, Converter and go to Color Ramp. We are going to connect our color output to our FAC input here and this color output. And this time we're going to connect it to our Roughness. Now, just as before, you're not going to notice it at first on this side, but if I rotate this around, you'll see that this weapon is now shiny on one side and then it's rough on the other. We can then use our mapping nodes to control this. So let's hit Shift A again. Let's go in here and go to um, Vector Mapping. Let's hit Shift A again. Let's go to Input Texture Coordinate. Let's connect our generated to our vector input here on our mapping and our vector output to the vector input on our gradient. Uh, and then go down here to Y and hit 90 degrees. Uh, now, as you can see, I have used my roughness and a gradient to create this sort of effect here where it starts off very rough and then sort of fades into a shinier part on the weapon right here. Uh, we can go in and make adjustments. Maybe we want this to be at an angle, uh, and maybe we want to move this over a little bit to be more in that part of the weapon. Uh, so this is just another example of something you can do with gradients. You know, you can not only use this on colors, uh, but you can also select some of the other things right here in your principal BSDF and come up with some really cool effects too. Uh, now, let's say, for example, you wanted to add an image in on top of this, too, where the image started off rougher and then it kind of fades into a shinier part right here. You could also do that as well. Uh, let's go in here and hit Shift A. Let's add a texture, image texture. Uh, let's hit Shift A again. Let's go down here to converter. Uh, I'm sorry, to color. And let's add a mix color right here. Uh, let's take this color output to B. Let's go in here and find an image. Uh, maybe we'll just select uh, this white paint splatter that I have and add it on top. Uh, now, as you can see, the image that I've added also sort of has this same effect. It's very rough right here on the front, and then it kind of goes into this shinier part right here on the back. Uh, so this is just something I wanted to show you guys here at the end of this video. You know, you can use gradients in a lot of different ways inside of your project, as well as doing colors. You can also control some of these other things that are right here inside of your principal BSDF. And so I did want to show you guys that real quickly at the end of this video. So this concludes my video on how to create gradients inside of Blender, and hopefully this information will really help you guys out. Now, as I mentioned previously, gradients can be extremely important for a lot of different reasons. Uh, not only can it help you to kind of differentiate some of the different weapons that you have in your workshop, uh, but it can also help break you out of that rut of just using solid base colors in your design all the time. Uh, also keep in mind, there are a lot of accepted weapons already in the game that use gradients as well, such as the fades and the amber fades and things like that. Uh, so that's also something to consider as well. Uh, but hopefully you guys got some good information out of this, and I cannot wait to see what you do with this inside of your own designs.
anyways thank you guys so much for watching this video i really appreciate it if you would please leave likes or comments down below and make sure and hit that subscribe button because it really helps this channel out a lot anyways thank you guys so much and we will see you in the next video